your side of the story about oh. uh, asking Grace Olivadas, inviting Grace Olivadas to come to law yes. school? Yes. Well, sometimes, you know, in life you get lucky. And uh, one day we were having a hearing of the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights. And I was chairman later on, but at that point I think I was vice chairman or some such thing. And we had a meeting in, in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And this rather dark and handsome young lady shows up, and she, uh, she has a, uh, obviously a very clear, incisive mind. And she is one of our best uh, witnesses. We were looking into the problems among the Navajos for human rights. And we were looking especially for problems of the uh, what they call Chicanos or Lat Latinos around the, in the Arizona, where there are a lot of Latinos come in from Mexico and where there's a very real presence and they are normally not treated very well. Mm -hmm. And uh, for that reason, we had her as one of our, our, our best uh, witnesses. Mm -hmm. And we actually published much of her testimony. So that was the background, and uh, about, uh, oh, probably five or six years later, I was in the airport in Chicago on my way to the White House, which was having a conference on minorities, a White House conference. You know, they have White House conferences on all kinds of things. But there were about 1,600 people coming in, and the president was going to address it. And, and uh, as I'm running through the airport, to the plane leaving for Washington, there is uh, Graciela Hill Olivares. And I said, Graciela, what are you doing here? She said, I'm going to Washington. And I said, I'm going to Washington. You going to that, that conference on, on race and human rights? And she said, yes. And I said, well, let's sit down and talk. And I said, um, how is your job going? She said, I don't have it. She was working on a civil service job in, in, in social action. And I said, what do you mean you don't have it? You're one of the best people we ever interviewed. And she said, well, the Republicans won, and I'm a Democrat, so I was out. And I said, it can't be that simple that just because you're a Democrat and you're so effective that they just let you go. They're idiots. And she said, well, that's the way life works. And I said, you know, Maybe one of your problems is you, you ought to have more background standing, like you ought to be Dr. Uh, Hale Olivares. And she said, that's a laugh. I never finished high school. And I said, would you like to study law? And she said, I'm not going to study law when I'm not, I never went to high school. I had a year or so, and that's all. I had to go to work. My family was poor. Well, I said, um, if I can get you into law school, will you go? She said, well, I've got a little boy about seven or eight years old, and my husband is safe way. He's gone. So uh, she said, uh, yes, I, I guess I'd, I'd be crazy not to say yes to that. Well, when I came back here at the meeting, after the meeting, I came back and I called the, my fellow commissioner who was the dean of Harvard Law School. And I said, Dean, would you take, first of all, do you remember uh, Hill Olivares? And she said, you mean that dark woman in, in Phoenix, Arizona, who gave such splendid testimony? And I said, you got her. That's the one. I said, she lost her job because the political party got the other side won, and she lost her job probably a civil service job. And I said, I got a question for you. Would you let her into Harvard Law School? And he said, gee, we don't have hardly any uh, Latin Americans or, or Latinos or whatever you want to call them in, in the uh, law school here at Harvard. I'd be delighted to have her. She's obviously very intelligent. I said, that's right, but she never finished high school, much less college. So she's missing about seven-year gap in education. He said, whatever she missed in schooling, she made up for an experience. And she's, I would love to have her in the law school here. I said, great. I may try to steal her here, but that depends on what she wants to do. So I came back here, called our dean, and said, uh, would you uh, 
take this lady? He said, I know that lady. I met her in, in Arizona. And he said, I'd love to have her. I said, oh, now I'll give you the bad news. She never finished high school, much less college. He said, I don't care about that. I like her for her mind. She's a very intelligent person. And after all, Abraham Lincoln didn't go to high school or college either, but he was a darn good lawyer. I said, okay. So I called her up and said, you got your choice. Well, she said, I think I want to go to Notre Dame. I'd feel a little more at home there, and I'm sure you can help me get my boy in a good school. I said, I'll get him in the best school in town if he's smart as you are. And she said, he's smart, which he was, and I got him in the best school in town. And she spent her three years here. She got her degree. She was the first woman, not just first Latina, mm -hmm. who went to our law school. Now, of course, half the people over there are women. But things were changing, and we were right in the middle of the change. After she graduated, mm -hmm. typical of her, she went out to New Mexico and, and took on the plight of the Indians, who were having all kinds of legal problems, mostly water problems. Then they had her teach at the University of New Mexico. And then she went back to uh, Arizona and continued the work she had done before. And sad thing, she one day got cancer, and she was dead in about six weeks. And right. She died at a very early age. But I love that lady, and I, I must say that I admired her greatly because in the face of, well, you're saying something about what the United States was at that time. If you had to be a woman and a... Latina woman, and you didn't have much education, you could get in the rough and tumble and hold your own just because you're smart. But without that LLD after your name, you're mm -hmm. not going very far. Mm -hmm. And she, if she had been alive, she'd probably be Attorney General of, of Arizona or New Mexico today. Mm -hmm. But a lovely lady, and, to, and proves the point that people get ahead if they're well educated. And if they're not well educated, there's a thousand barriers. Mm -hmm. She got the top education in law and she went up like a rocket. Right. She oh, became thank you for that. well let me tell you one more thing. When Jimmy Carter got elected, he said, I don't know all the people you know and could you send me a list of people uh, who would be good to put in my administration? I said, Well I'll send you in 10 different categories, and, and one of the categories is going to be women. And she was at the head of my list, and she got the top woman's job in Washington, right. which was quite a jump from getting thrown out of Phoenix of her job there. Lovely lady. Mm -hmm. and, he, and Jimmy Carter thought she was a bee's knees. Oh, thank you for that story. That, that personal touch really yeah. helps because she's not around for me to ask anymore. Yeah. can't interview her. Well, we can pray for her. Yeah.